Each week on Prism, we're profiling some of the world's key green pioneers. Today, John Defterios meets a man who helped develop some key renewable energy solutions in what's described as America's greenest state. California on its own would be a member of the G8 industrialized nations and often sets global trends for environmental policy. Terry Tamanen was the right-hand man on policy of the former California governor. He's credited with bringing in the state's hydrogen highway and its million solar roofs initiative and helping pass the state's landmark Global Warming Solutions Act. He recently wrote the book Cracking the Carbon Code, the keys to sustainable profits in the new economy. And he joins me now from New York. Terry, I, I want to jump right into this idea of the golden state being the greenest state. We know the size of the California economy. There was resistance to the initial moves. Can California hit these targets of reducing the emissions by 2020? We absolutely can, and I think one of the things we've proven, you mentioned, for example, the Million Solar Roofs Initiative, which now has put solar panels on uh, millions of homes already and businesses in, in California. It's created thousands and thousands of jobs which can't be outsourced to another country. So we've proven we can bring the cost of these technologies down, make them more available to people, and create uh, economic development at the same time. How would you transfer that to economies of the Middle East or Asia who say, look, we haven't grown to our full potential yet. It's not time to implement these sort of policies. You know, I would say use California and the rest of the United States as the cautionary tale. You don't want to wait until you, you run out. Sheikh Yamani, one of the founders of OPEC, famously said the Stone Age didn't end for a lack of stone. So if instead you use things that are reliable and available to you and you start with energy efficiency, which can cut your demand, whether it's for transportation fuel or electricity, dramatically, uh, in the first instance, and then look for those domestic renewable resources. You control your energy future and therefore your economic future instead of letting the world commodity uh, markets do that for you. I want to get your thoughts on $100 to $120 oil. Is it really prompting the move away from fossil fuels at a fast enough pace, in your opinion? Well, fast enough. I mean, look, uh, there's been a lot of damage already caused uh, around the world uh, to, uh, to public health. We're, we're marching armies around the world to secure our next fix of oil and killing people for it. Global warming is causing sea level rise uh, and threatening to wipe out entire island nations and, and cause billions of dollars of damage, and some of which has already started. So, uh, so it's already too late in some ways. But yes, uh, the rising price of oil does help. It focuses our attention on those alternatives which we thought were too expensive. But when you do true cost accounting of what all of those other costs are for uh, for disease and for national security implications and, and global warming, uh, we find that the alternatives are actually much cheaper. Uh, are we spoiled in a sense? We expect low-cost goods from China and we suck them into the G8 economies right now. Do we have to factor this in with our actual purchases in the future to say the carbon footprint of bringing that shirt in from Indonesia or Malaysia or China just doesn't add up? Well, absolutely. And Walmart, for example, uh, by 2012 will have a sustainability label on all of the products uh, sold on their shelves, which will include a carbon footprint so consumers can be more aware and try to do their part. But I also think we miss the opportunity for domestic jobs. I was just yesterday at a great recycling facility in New Jersey by a company called ReCommunity, which uh, is source separating uh, various kinds of products in a very sophisticated way so that you can actually deconstruct them back into their original chemicals and other components which means you don't have to go overseas to get some of these uh, these natural materials and these resources and commodities which means you can manufacture closer to home you don't necessarily have to go all the way halfway around the world to manufacture the plastic flamingo or the or the nike sneakers so i think that's an opportunity in the future all right, our John Defterios there. Coming up for you, she's been voted one of the most beautiful women in the world. So why is Julia Roberts being banned from a beauty ad in London? Stay with us.